It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day three in Claremont. And thank you so much, all of my fabulous followers that came by to greet me and the crew and to say hello today. And special thanks to Terry, who made me this adorable Terry? succulent apron. Yes. Terry. 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 Two yeah. Terry's. Yeah. Terry. Uh, Terry Loves Succulents is her handle on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah T-E-R-R-Y. All right, so, oh my goodness, Hannah and Terry, Blonde Terry, took off after this raised bed, and I was so concerned about having enough plant material to do this, and I thought I'd have to just limit it to groupings, and I didn't have any rubble, and I didn't buy soil for this, and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? It turned out beyond my wildest expectations. Not only did I have plenty of plant material, I actually had a little bit left over. And we had the Claremont rocks, which they were able to work in, and we had enough canned dirt to make all of the nice little mounds and undulations that we like to do. So this... You know, the whole idea behind this is that it will mirror the initial installation. However, this gets a lot more sun, so this should color up a lot more than the other installation will do. You should count the plants for everybody. Like, not, uh, not every plant planted, but the variety. Oh! Only like five, six. Yeah, Hannah said count the plants. We've got, basically, the five-gallon specimens are blue elf, undulatas, ovatas, and portalacarias. Mm -hmm. So four or five gallon options. And then the one gallon options are, um, or, yeah, the blue atoll the and the little crassula and ruber tinctum and the little moonstones and the Echeveria harmsii and the sedum aurora. Repeat, 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 repeat. Now, we did have a little aloe cameronii that I took out of the other installation that I did earlier, um, a year and a half ago for my son, because this just doesn't get enough sun over there and it will not stay red. So moved it over here. We had a little aloe ferox left over from what I brought from, had brought up from uh, Waterwise Botanicals. So that's kind of our thriller in this bed. And then the Portolacaria afrovirigata, which will in no time spread uh, over the wall and just cascade. We have got some very happy hummers, too. They have found the aloe blue elf. Look at that. They're so excited. So much nectar for them here. They are. They're, they're just everywhere. It's so cool. So, yeah, I mean, there were a few other little this and that's that I pulled from the other section and moved in. Oh, you know, a couple, um, yeah, Ionium sunbursts. But no, for the most part, this is just a few different things repeated, and it's, it's just fantastic. So, you know, I'm always going on about the three R's, the rocks, repetition, and restraint, and I'm good with rocks pretty darn good with repetition but the restraint is not one of my strong suits so there's this gap right here you guys of there's nothing here and i just am just going apoplexic oh my gosh could i put a bistro set here well that doesn't make any sense what about you know bringing in another giant rock or or bringing a, like a, a big mangave kaleidoscope or something needs to go here um and then i thought no you know what let's have some faith in the process and remember Lucy. She needs areas to walk. yes and our succulent grandbaby needs some space too where she can move through this without tripping over plants so yes and you know it's it's just it's going to be it's going to be fantastic so well, okay, I, I didn't, I, I came in this morning before everybody showed up for work and I popped in a few things here and there in the actual mounded areas where it just looked, I just couldn't with it. So there's some blue atolls tucked around out there, groupings and, you know, a few sedum groupings, but 
yeah, for the most part, I'm leaving, I'm leaving space. Now, as we head down this way, you can see this brown irrigation tubing. Um, that's our Netafim subterranean drip. The guys just make rings, put them around the groupings of plants, and then see, here's the connector. So a polyline will go, um, well, like what Cully's doing there. He's attaching the polyline, the polyline. So, you know, that's what will transport the water all over the yard. And it'll drip out onto our plants and use a fraction of the water that was being used. You can see all of the capped riser or, or um, pop-ups. There were dozens and dozens and dozens of sprinklers in this yard because this was a lawn. So yeah, we're just gonna cut back um, thousands and thousands of gallons of water. Hello. Hello, I love you. We had a neighbor stop by, sorry about that. I had to give him a card. Uh, but carrying on, we wanted to go local for our top dressing rock and weren't sure what we'd be able to find, but Greg found at Wolfenbarger, he found this rock, which is like a half inch and it's yeah. called pyrite. And it looks like gold nuggets. I love it. I think this is gonna work out really, really well. I actually like this better than the three eighths for the larger yard because this is a bigger space and I just feel like a slightly larger rock will be more dramatic. So uh, after we get all of this spread down, you know me, we're gonna go back and um, I'll come in probably with some black three quarter or something to splash around just to add that third dimension. So to, uh, to, to finish, we are working on irrigation now. Greg is stringing the lights and we hope, keep your fingers crossed, that we might actually get a little rocking done before the, um, before the end of the day today. All right, so it's the end of day three. It's a blur. Um, and with the help of our volunteer from Chino, one Signe, uh, who came by and helped us. She came in clutch because you will not, you will note, nary a line in sight. All of the irrigation is finished. Everything got connected. Everything uh, got trenched, buried, stapled down. The only thing exposed is a little bit of electrical um, low voltage wire. Greg got a number of lights in, but we're going to wait till after dark tonight and see how they look and see if we need to add any more. So that'll happen tomorrow. But I was able, while everybody was um, burying lines and Greg was working on the lights, I was able to get some rock down with Hannah's help up here in the tapestry area. So this, um, I haven't washed this off yet. I think it'll be a lot, a lot prettier. It's very dirty, but this, I'm really, really happy with this rock. And I think that my little black three quarter inch lava accents are really gonna set it off. And I'll be doing that tomorrow. The ribbon that I'm gonna do a black probably won't even show up in three years because the plants will grow over it. But it's such an inexpensive, easy way to elevate your design by adding some little splashes of contrasting color that is totally, uh, totally worth it to me to go to the effort to do it. I see, uh, I see dirt. Remember, when you're putting down your top desk dressing rock, no dirt. We wanna make sure that you cover lift the skirts of your plant. See, look at that under there, see? See that dirt showing? Get that rock up under there. It helps the plants perk. And also sometimes these plants might shrink a little bit if they're shocky. So if you go off uh, and don't fill in all of your empty spaces in time, you're gonna see the holes and it's gonna bug you because you will have used all your rock and you won't have any left over to fill in the gaps. So 
Yeah, it takes, really, it is a labor of love. It takes a long time to go in through a tapestry and work this rock up into all the nooks and crannies. And that's something that I'll probably come out early tomorrow and do. Um, Signe, what are your kids' names? <laughs> well, I have six kids. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, she has six. Let's start. Okay, from top to bottom, who do we have? Okay, Shandine. We have, Shan we have Shandine, the oldest. Hello. Sebastian. Sebastian, hi. Isabel. Isabel, hello, sweetie. Santiago. Santiago. <laughs> Basilio. Basilio. Asa. Asa. Hey, guys, you're famous. You're on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Okay, so thanks, everybody. Just as it's been this uh, revolving door of, of folks, you're the friendliest bunch up here in San Gabriel Valley. So thanks so much for stopping by and saying hello. Really excited to show you tomorrow. We might even finish. We might. So stay tuned. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity, reporting with Team DFS <laughs> and Day 3 in Claremont and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.